Hi everybody. <clears throat> Let's see. They tell me we need to do a video, and I'm going to do a video on, well, for one, Trini Lopez died. Uh, Trini Lopez had his own guitar, and, and you'll probably recognize this one as a 335. This is a 1967 335, and in 1968, Trini Lopez. Now, Trini Lopez, you got to be a pretty big artist to get a guitar with your own name on it. Uh, it just doesn't happen, especially Gibson, who was still pretty stoic in the mid-60s. Les Paul was a huge star, like a giant star, and with lots of hits, he got his name on a guitar. Otherwise, guys like Barney Kessel, Trini Lopez, they had really earned the right to design their own guitar. Now, the Trini Lopez really is a 335. For all practical purposes, it's the same thing. It has a center block running through it, but it has this theme of these like cat's eye or elongated diamonds uh, all over the guitar. The headstock is stolen from a Firebird, but that was kind of a Fender thing too. You can see the headstock there, and it's very much a Firebird headstock, which again, stolen from Fender and their design cues. And then we have these diamonds here, diamond inlays, but this guitar, with its center block is a fantastic guitar. And one of those things that's so rare, I remember having one of these in blue that sat in the store for about two years in blue. Today, that guitar from 15 years ago is probably worth 10 times what we were asking for it then. This guitar, uh, this Trini Lopez, is just unique enough and cool enough that it's likely a really good solid investment as guitars and wood prices go up. Trini Lopez starred in the Dirty Dozen. Trini Lopez was actually in Buddy Holly's Crickets. He was the singer in the post Buddy Holly, after Buddy Holly died. Uh, Trini Lopez was a singer in the Crickets. He made two models. One is the standard, this one. The other was the Deluxe, which is a big body like a 175. So not only did he have his name on one guitar, he had his name on two. Only Les Paul did better than that. Um, Trini Lopez had 13 hit singles by the time he got that. And, and I'm going to think there were a lot of like pop singles that you probably haven't heard of a lot of them. But 67 was a big year. 65 is the year Fender sold uh, to CBS. And 65 was the year Martin opened up a big factory and expanded their production. 65 was also the year that Ted McCarty left Gibson. Ted was still responsible for the design of this guitar and helped Trini Lopez come up with it. After Ted left, things changed, but not right away. Things changed gradually at both Fender and Gibson. This, for instance, is a 1967 Strat and a fantastic guitar, another good investment. We love selling old guitars and it always seems like they cost a lot when you're looking at them and then five years later you're like, wow, I'm glad I bought that. Don't have that amp on too loud. 67 Strats are rare because they were going to discontinue it. So there's really not many 67 strats out there. This being 67 still has a Brazilian rosewood board, lacquer finish, staggered magnets. The, the material on the plastic changed. It's more of a PVC plastic, so it didn't turn green. That was on purpose. They have a bigger headstock, and that's been trendy lately, but this guitar, super lightweight, old strat, really a cool buy, and for about $10,000 less than a 63. Um, this is a cool guitar, 1968 Gibson SG Standard, uh, and then of course this 67 ES335. Now this 67 335 is kind of my favorite guitar in the store right now. The neck is big, it's still a Brazilian rosewood, and um, guitars with holes in it right now, that is F holes or acoustic guitars, are hot for us. So this is really a neat guitar. <laughs> And these guitars from this generation with their Brazilian rosewood boards, real lacquer finish, 
great pickups, great magnets, great history, a great piece of Americana and rock and roll history. These guitars are fantastic investments and really because they're about the same price of what it would cost to do a custom shop version. This guitar sitting at $52.50, go look up Gibson's new custom shop stuff which won't have a Brazilian rose, rosewood board but has all the other features offered here except for the old wood and the old lacquer and the cotton based lacquer and not being dipped in rubber uh, and all of that. So there we go. There's a there's something on late 60s Gibson's and Fender.